Basis of Scientific Research, Lecture 10, The Theme, Writing Thesis. The Outline. The first, thesis structure. The second, title page. Three, abstract. Four, table of contents. List of figures. List of tables. Introduction, methods and results. So, the aim of the dissertation or thesis is to produce an original piece of research work on a clearly defined topic. Usually, a dissertation is the most substantial piece of independent work in the undergraduate program, while a thesis is usually associated with master's degrees. Although these terms can be interchangeable and may vary between countries and universities. A dissertation or thesis is likely to be the longest and most difficult piece of work a student has ever completed. It can, however, also be a very rewarding piece of work since, like, unlike essays and other assignments, the student is able to pick a topic of special interest and work on their own initiative. Writing a dissertation requires a range of planning and research skills that will be of great value in your future career and within organizations. The dissertation topic and question should be sufficiently focused and you can collect all the necessary data within a relatively short frame time and usually, usually about six weeks for undergraduate programs. You should also choose a topic that you already know, something about that you have a frame of reference for your literature search and some understanding and interest in the theory behind your topic. There are many ways to write a dissertation or thesis. Most universities and colleges provide very specific guidance for their students and about their preferred approach. So, organizing your time. However organized, however organized you are, writing a dissertation is likely to be one of the most challenging tasks you have ever undertaken. Take a look at our pages on organizing your study time and organization still, as well as management skill and project planning to give you some ideas about how to organize your time and energy for the task ahead. General structure. Like an academic paper for journal publications, dissertations generally follow a fairly standard structure. The following pages discuss each of these in turn and give more detailed advice about how to prepare and write each one, which search proposal, introduction, literature review, methodology, results and discussion, conclusions and extra sections. Particularly for master programs, your university may ask for your thesis to be submitted in separate sections rather than a single document, one breakdown that is often seen in the threefold. So, title page. Title page including subtitle, institution, department, date of delivery, research mentor and advisor, the institution and email addresses. Introduction, which should be set out research questions that you plan to explore and give some ideas about how you might go about it. If you are submitting it as a research proposal, it will be fairly scratchy as you won't have a chance to review the literature thoroughly but it should contain at least some theoretical foundation and a reasonable idea of why you won't study this issue. Literature review and methodology, which are often combined because you plan to do, should emerge from and complete the previous literature and results and discussion, which should set out that you actually did, the results you obtained and discuss these in the context of literature. You will probably have an overall word code for the local dissertation or thesis. If you are required to submit the sections, ensure that you have left yourself enough words for the results and discussions. It is easy to get carried away with the literature review. A good abstract explains why, in one line, why the other is important. It then often goes to give a summary of major results, preferably coached in numbers with error limits. The final sentences explain the major implications of your work. And good abstract is concise, readable and quantitative. Be explicit. 
Information in the title should be not be repeated. And answers to these questions should be found in the abstract. So we look at the table of contents. Here, headings, subheadings, list of figures, list of tables, introduction, methods, results, discussions, conclusion, recommendation, acknowledgement, references, and appendices. So list of figures. List pages, page numbers, all figures. The list should include a short title for each figure, but not the whole caption. As for the list of tables, the list should include a short title for each table, but not the whole. And you can write a good introduction until you know what the body is. In the introduction, consider writing the introductory section that you have completed in the rest of the paper rather than before. Be sure to include a book at the beginning of the introduction. This is a statement of something sufficiently interesting to motivate your reader to read the rest of the paper. It is an important interesting scientific problem that your paper either solves or addresses. You should draw the reader and make them want to read the rest of the paper. The next paragraph in the introduction should cite previous research in this area. It should cite those who had the idea or ideas first and should also cite those who have done the most recent and relevant work. You should then go on to explain why more work was necessary, your work of course. What is the, belongs to the introductory section? A statement of the goal paper and sufficient background information to allow the reader to understand the content and significance. Proper acknowledgement of the previous work on your paper. And the introduction should be focused on the thesis state question. All the cited work should be directly relevant to the goals of the thesis. This is not a place to summarize everything that you ever read in the subject. Explain the scope of your work that will not be included. A verbal roadmap or verbal table of contents guiding the reader to what lies ahead. As for results, they are actually a statement of observation, including statistics, tables, and graphs. Indicate information of ratio variation. Mention negative results as well as positive. Do not interpret results, save for their discussion. Use units throughout the series. Break your results into logical segments. As for results in discussion sections, guarantee your observations from the interpretation. The writer must take it crystal clear to, to, read, to the reader which statements are observations and which are interpretation. Alternatively, this goal can be accomplished by general careful use of phrases such as I infer vast bodies of literature became absolute and ideas they also might have heard about the processes that caused the observed phenomena. Discussions. Further reading from skills you need. The skills you need guide for students. And develop the skills you need to make the most of your time as a student. Our ebooks are ideal for students at all stages of education, school, college, and university. They are full easy to follow practical information that will help you to learn more effectively and get better grades. The general guide use the marking scheme to show your approximate split for the word content. If you are submitting your dissertation as a single piece of work and not in separate submissions, you may find it easier to write it in order. One of the best ways to write a dissertation as you go along, especially the literature review. As you read each reference, summarize it and group it by themes. Don't forget to reference it as you go. Writing style. Dissertations and academic articles used always to be written in the third person and in the passive voice. As an example, you might write an experiment was carried out to test. Check with your university about the requirements before you start to write. If you cannot find any guidelines, ask your supervisor or the person who will be marking your thesis about their preferences. Phrases to avoid include phrase use instead due to the fact, because, in addition, etc. 
the role of academic supervisor there is to supervise your work. It's not to do for you, not to tell you how to do it. However, the academic reputation is bound up in the results of the students and that they supervise to have a vested interest is in helping you to get the best possible marks. You should inf therefore not feel shy or embarrassed about asking them for help if you go into difficulties or you need some advice. It is worth spending a bit of time building up your relationship with your supervisor. It's also worth discussing and clarifying them exactly what they are prepared to, to do or support you in particular practical details. One final place, piece of advice about your supervisor. If you don't get on, then change. Formulate formatting and templates. If your university has a required format for a dissertation, and particularly if they supply a template, then use it. Proofreading. You need to give your plenty of time to proofread your work to make sure that you haven't made any stupid errors this is likely to take longer than you think. If possible, try to find a friend or fellow student in the same position to whom you can swap dissertations for proofreading. Discussion. Start with a few sentences that summarize the most important results. The discussion section should be a brief essay in itself, answering the questions and caveats. What are the major patterns? What are the relationships, trends, exceptions to these patterns? like causes, mechanisms, agreements or disagreements, results, and duplication of the present results. Conclusion. This page sets out general advice on issues connected with writing a dissertation, also known as a thesis. The following pages set out in more detail how to approach each section of your dissertation, including literature review, methodology, results, and conclusions.